Well, so maybe we pass to Marco. I saw Marco showing up and probably, Hi. hey Marco. So probably you, sh you, you saw the sunset uh, on Alice, uh, Alice's, you are muted Alice, so. Ah. Okay, so Marco, yes. Ah. Is the now sunset, I see it. Uh, yes. And uh, so Marco, uh, can you share the screen? Yes. So I should be sharing right now. This is my yes. presentation. Uh, and this is the first slide. Very Do you good. See my screen. Yes, yes, perfect. So okay, so you can uh, go ahead. Uh, you have twenty minutes. Okay, thank you, and thank you for inviting me, uh, especially Lice. Uh, too bad we are not all in Trieste now, but uh, okay, at least we can see the sunset. Um, so what I'm going to talk about, so we are a group of uh, um, essentially theoretical physicists um, and we do a lot of modeling, a lot of it is data driven, but what I'm, go what I'm going to talk about today is more like a, a conceptual model of uh, um, uh, gene sweeps uh, um, and uh, so there will be no data in this talk. It's a very simple thing, uh, but uh, you know, there, there is uh, one message that I think is related to um, uh, a lot of things that were uh, raised in previous talks. Unfortunately, I'm teaching this week heavy duty, so I missed a lot of talks. Um, some, of, some of it I saw and it was uh, very interesting and I'm trying to catch up a little bit by um, looking at the videos. Um, anyway, uh, if I can change my slide. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, who worked on this project. Uh, basically, the idea came up with some discussions um, a few years ago with Joshua Weitz and then Jacopo Grilli, who's uh, there at ICTP, implemented the first version of the model. And then Simone is basically now uh, bringing home uh, um, uh, this study and trying to conclude it. We, we are writing it up uh, right now. So uh, any feedback actually is useful. So basically I'm gonna tell you three things. And the first thing is that bacteria share genes as an introduction, uh, but this is uh, completely obvious, I think, to this audience. So I'm just gonna use some uh, work we did on gene families um, to reiterate uh, um, this concept that was uh, uh, raised by, I think, most of the talks of this uh, workshop. Um, uh, this is just a network of uh, um, um, horizontal transfers of uh, gene families that you see between a bunch of bacteria to see that there's a lot. And what we did is a model for um, um, gene family exchange uh, uh, simple neutral collisional model, uh, looking at the abundance profiles of gene families. For example, in the data, you can quantify them by PFAMs, how many PFAMs uh, of uh, uh, one PFAM uh, uh, you know, um, family uh, you find uh, um, in uh, bacteria. Um, and uh, you can do the statistics of abundance across bacteria and look at the fluctuations of abundance. And the model predicts that um, basically the, the more horizontal, you need horizontal transfers to have uh, some dispersion in this family abundance. And if you have like uh, gene family expansions, you, you have even more dispersion. Um, but in the data, you also see this kind of blue um, uh, uh, histograms of specific gene families um, where um, you have under dispersed compared to the what the model prediction uh, family. So the prediction is that these families do not do any horizontal transfer. And this is basically what you see looking at um, horizontal transfers quantified by um, you know standard phylogenetic methods that um, you have a relation uh, between the dispersion of family abundance and uh, um, the amount of horizontal transfers. This means that uh, basically a, a genome uh, is uh, both fluid and stable, depends, uh, depending on the functional content that you look at. So if you look at the right functional content, uh, it's stable and it's vertically inherited, and uh, um, it's a phylogenetic tree. Whereas if you look at other kinds of functional context, for example, all the families that you find on plasmids, uh, um, uh, the genome is very fluid, but not only those. 
um, uh, the genome, uh, even you know, metabolic uh, enzymes are uh, transferred uh, uh, a lot. Uh, the genome is, uh, is very fluid and uh, mm, there is no real phylogeny, but you find uh, more like a network. So uh, it's both a tree and a network. Uh, so this was my introduction, but what I really want to talk about um, is not uh, that genes are shared a lot, but also that genes sweep. And uh, uh, we, I will clarify in a minute what it means that they sweep. So they don't sweep your kitchen, but they sweep your microbial communities. And um, um, we were inspired by this uh, um, study that appeared now 10 years ago in science, where by methods of um, um, basically comparative genomics, they discovered in plankton um, um, a few genes that were uh, clearly beneficial um, in some sets of uh, Vibrio uh, strains that spread um, without reducing the diversity uh, of the community. So somehow these genes were um, um, beneficial, they were spreading, um, but then uh, across uh, species, uh, across uh, uh, strains. So the question is, uh, uh, how is that possible? Uh, because, um, you know, if you think about this uh, problem with the simple paradigm of uh, um, population genetics, you would expect that the first guy that gets this beneficial uh, gene gets um, an advantage, a higher fitness, and uh, will spread in the population, um, you know, with its whole genome. Uh, you will get a genome, a genome sweep, not a gene sweep. So how can you um, spread a beneficial gene in a community with many species, across many species, uh, more or less preserving uh, the diversity uh, of that um, community? That's the conceptual uh, problem that they raised at the end of that paper. Basically, they had a few propositions. Their main proposition, which is not really a mathematical model, so we're gonna try to support our idea with the mathematical model, was that, okay, you have, maybe you have very fast uh, horizontal gene transfer rates, and then you have uh, um, different, quickly after you, uh, you have the differentiation of different uh, ecotypes. So uh, now there, there's a barrier and, uh, and this guy, this, the gene has spread, and uh, uh, these guys, uh, they cannot um, basically um, do genome sweeps on each other. That was their idea originally. And they also proposed uh, towards the end uh, of the paper that, okay, okay, maybe there's uh, uh, some frequency dependent selection uh, due to um, different uh, deleterious genes, for example, genes that are under phages that are um, linked with uh, the bene beneficial gene. And this idea that they was proposed originally by Shapiro as a concept was built uh, by uh, in Kunihiko Kaneko and Takeuchi with uh, in several papers, this was the first one, into a mathematical model where they show that, yeah, indeed uh, this is possible, but this model requires, um, you know, that every time uh, this beneficial gene is uh, linked uh, with a different uh, uh, deleterious gene, which is, you know, possible, but uh, so far, mm, maybe not systematically the case. And so far, there is no um, valid experimental validation of this, but uh, certainly it's a possibility. Um, some other, uh, um, another study um, proposed that uh, maybe if the horizontal uh, um, gene transfer rates and uh, the migration rates are very fast, um, you can also have uh, um, a single population uh, with, the, you know, where the gene can spread in more than, uh, when, than one species. But uh, I think if you look at the numbers, you have really to push a lot on the numbers uh, to get this diversity in a, in, within a single population. So this is uh, so far the debate uh, um, on this, as far as I, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, simplifying a little bit uh, um, uh, on uh, uh, possible explanations of, uh, um, on, uh, of gene, these gene sweeps. And we have another uh, proposition, and that's the last part of uh, uh, what I'm gonna um, talk about, um, which is uh, not, 
mutually exclusive with the ones that I presented you, but it's another um, you know, mechanism that could uh, uh, work on top of those. And our idea is that uh, metapopulation structure, so the structure um, um, of a community um, divided in uh, sub-communities, islands, where you have migration and, uh, um, uh, and uh, different, uh, different populations in each island, could actually help uh, preserving the diversity uh, in a gene sweep. And, uh, and this is uh, something that we built into a conceptual model. So if you want to visualize for plankton, for example, what could be, uh, uh, you know, what could give the structure of a metapopulation, it's basically marine snow. Um, and, and this applies to the Shapiro data. Um, basically this Vibrio, they live uh, on uh, chitin uh, um, fragments um, that are found uh, um, uh, in the ocean and uh, each fragment uh, can host um, several species uh, and supplies the nutrients. And then you, you can have migration from uh, these fragments. It's really a metapopulation structure. Other microbial communities, uh, for example, the gut, it's not that clear what uh, the metapopulation uh, structure could, could be, but you know, uh, it's a complex and anyway community. So uh, it's possible that the same uh, could apply uh, um, to other kinds of communities, but uh, to be honest, we didn't really think about it very seriously. So this is our model. Um, actually, no, this is a, um, a, um, a little bit of a premise. Um, in order to you know, um, formulate the question of how um, a, a beneficial gene introduced by horizontal transfer and the genome sweep uh, uh, could uh, um, affect the diversity of a community, um, you have to supply a model for the diversity of a community. But the results that I discussed don't really, don't really depend on uh, which model you supply. To fix the ideas, we basically used uh, these um, neutral model of biodiversity, which if you are familiar with the uh, population genetics is uh, equivalent to the infinite alleles model, except that the alleles are the islands. So these uh, circles are islands, they are populations. Um, and then you, um, you can have different species, the colors on, a, on an island, and, um, uh, and you have uh, introduction of a new species with some probability and migration with uh, uh, um, you know, removal of uh, an existent uh, species on an island um, with uh, some other, you know, uh, the complement as a complementary move. And this gives you some stable diversity. And that's the only thing, uh, um, for example, but th that we will need, that there is a stable diversity and that your model for diversity um, is a kind of a homeostatic. So if you change the diversity, it will tend to go back to the diversity with some time scale. So the real model that we did um, is uh, about the, um, the gene sweep. So now you have your species on the islands. And as you can see, these islands um, have only one color. So uh, we work in the hypothesis that uh, um, uh, the, the rates of, uh, um, of migration and horizontal transfer are not uh, high enough to supply multiple, uh, um, uh, multiple species on a single um, subpopulation. Um, and the zeros and the ones are the presence of the beneficial gene. So I have a genome sweep uh, with migration move with some probability in the model um, um, where basically, um, I get another one, but with the same color of the previous one. So this is a genome sweep. But then I get uh, um, uh, a horizontal transfer uh, move. So a gene sweep kind of move where the ones can spread without changing the color. So in, in this case, uh, um, this is uh, um, um, the same, uh, the gene has moved to the other um, island on a different species and, uh, and uh, it has uh, uh, swept uh, within that species. Okay, um, so what happens when you run this very simple model? Uh, you start from a population with a steady diversity. These are different realizations of a simulation. And then you, here you introduce um, the new beneficial gene 
And then you get uh, some reduction, of course, bec because you have uh, um, these moves, uh, these kind of moves, you get a reduction in the diversity. But this reduction is not a reduction to zero. That's the whole point. So you get some kind of reduction, which depends on your parameters. And you can quantify your reduction by the ratio of the final to the initial diversity. And uh, you can take uh, average values of this because you, know, you can have uh, um, um, variabilities from, uh, from uh, realization to realization. So basically, you only have one parameter, one relevant parameter, which is the relative rate of uh, horizontal transfer to sweep, uh, this pH over PM. And, um, and um, you want to quantify how much uh, um, uh, diversity you have left, um, uh, depending on this new, which sets the initial diversity, basically. That's the, um, uh, the initial biodiversity model. Uh, so if you have no horizontal transfer, of course, you, don't pre you, you, know, you end up uh, um, um, uh, with zero diversity. But any value, even small, will preserve, uh, let's say, even 50% uh, uh, with like uh, a ratio of uh, 0 0.1, you already have like 50% of the diversity of the, um, the initial diversity of the population. And then if you have a homeostatic diversity, it could increase um, again. So and this doesn't really depend on the parameter. The other nice thing about this model, but this is like not uh, super relevant here, is that it's so simple that you can uh, do analytical calculations and then you get a match with your simulations. And, uh, um, and this is just to reiterate the message with different parameters, you get still a good agreement. You, you get a good agreement uh, between the predicted values uh, for this ratio from simulation and theory. And then you have uh, the last thing um, that I'm going to tell you, uh, which is uh, um, the time scale separation or time scale overlap issue. So. Uh, you have a time scale, which you can see here, by which you reduce your diversity when you introduce um, uh, a, um, a beneficial gene in your metapopulation, in our model. And then um, here, um, you have a slower time scale, which here basically is uh, in, in this plot, you, you don't see it, but you're gonna see it in a second. Uh, where you can, may have uh, like a, um, a sort of recovery to the equilibrium value of uh, the diversity, uh, you know, dep which depends on the mechanisms that preserve diversity in, uh, in your community. So, so far I showed you the model basically uh, in, under an assumption that these uh, time scales are very separated, but these time scales uh, uh, you know, can, uh, can have some overlap and you, of course, you can run the model uh, um, with, uh, you know, considering this overlap. So in this case, you have like a quick loss um, of diversity due to the introduction um, of the beneficial gene spreading across species. Uh, and then you have a slower recovery um, uh, due to the, you know, homeostatic mechanisms within your community, in our case, a neutral model that preserve uh, biodiversity. You can run the model with uh, uh, you know, multiple uh, rounds of beneficial uh, sweeping genes, in this case, uh, here, here, and here. Um, and then if basically you know, the prediction is that if you don't get a beneficial gene every day, uh, basically your, your community will get some kind of uh, um, stable uh, diversity. So, but anyway, uh, it's a, the other you know, conceptual, uh, contribution, it's a, it's a matter of time scales. So how much and how fast uh, does your gene sweep decrease your diversity and um, how fast does your community recover its diversity? Okay, and this is just the same thing. So only if you have very frequent uh, um, um, sweeps, uh, uh, do you reduce uh, um, on, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a long-term uh, basis the average diversity of your community? So again, it's very, very simple, maybe too simple, but uh, the advantage is that with such a simple model, um, uh, you know, it's also very clear what the ingredients do. That's it, I'm done. Um, so basically, um, we have this uh, metapopulation uh, hypothesis supported by this uh, very simple model. And our idea is that um, you know, it's not contrary to other things that uh, um, have been proposed, 
but it could uh, play a role. So the next thing would be to try to support it with data. This is not super simple, but uh, um, um, it's not impossible, I think. That, that would be our next project, which, uh, which has not started yet. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Marco. Thank you very much. So uh, maybe we can have uh, uh, some, uh, if there are some questions for the talk of Marco. Can I make a comment more than a question? Yes. So I might be wrong because it's late and it's been a bumpy day again. <laughs> But it seems to me that you are kind of showing a model of how plasmid, how conjugative plasmid are maintained in a population in, in, in between strains. So uh, I yes, well, I didn't know any didn't details about pl yeah, plasmid. You didn't mean to, but <laughs> it seems no, because in this case we can. I mean, we have data, there are people around. Yes, I mean, I think this model, uh, if there are um, plasmid data on uh, like the ones that there were two talks, three talks yesterday on uh, um, plasmid, uh, sp plasmid spreading um, um, within uh, yes. microbial communities. And I think that this, I mean, we, we had it in mind, we developed this model with, um, you know, uh, this plankton uh, idea in mind. Uh, and the, in this Shapiro paper, they don't really know the mechanism. And I, I don't know if by now people have worked on the mechanisms of like, whether, the, for example, these uh, genes are carried by plasmids. Typically they, they, they didn't say, and uh, they, they didn't know. Um, but I, I also think that what, there was one mathematical model presented yesterday about the spread yeah. of uh, uh, where- the Mike, Mike Broker. Yes. And uh, yes. uh, he, he, in that model, uh, um, diversity was not a relevant variable, but they looked at stability. And that's why I asked, uh, you know, that diversity, did you look at diversity? And they say, he said, uh, yeah, we can look at diversity and we know that it's reduced. That's what I would expect, that there is a reduction and then it would be interesting to see whether there is a recovery, what are the mechanisms. So I think yeah. it might be relevant. We just didn't think about it before 